Ever since I can remember, I've seen robots promise as part of our future. In cartoons, in news, in tech demos, you name it. It seems like they've always been part of our predicted future. A shiny mental helper that lives with us. But is that actually ever gonna happen? Are we anywhere near that reality? The tree robots, billions of robots, but humanoid robots. Humanoid robots, high powered robots. First, let's clear something up. What's the difference between your home appliances and a robot? Well, things like a toaster do one fixed job. You push a button and you get toast. Action and result, end of the story. But robots, they're different. The idea is that they're able to adapt to different variables and circumstances. They use sensors to see the world, tiny processors to make decisions, and motors to act and interact with the world around them. In other words, they adapt. Your robot vacuum, isn't just vacuuming. It's creating a map of its surroundings to avoid obstacles while completing a task. Or at least, that's the idea. So why are we obsessed with them? Why have they always been part of our vision of a tech-advanced future? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The promise has always been robots are meant to make our lives easier. They will take care of incredibly time-consuming, repetitive, and even physically demanding tasks which sounds great, and to an extent, it has happened. They already are in a lot of manufacturing facilities. The demand for robotics-based careers is certainly there. So we do have robots, but that's not really what you're thinking of when someone brings up robots, is it? Not really. I know that I think of the shiny humanoid metal helper that lives with us that was promised when I was a kid. And that's what I wanna focus on. The companies that are currently working towards that goal, or at least close to that goal. Enter Boston Dynamics, perhaps the most notorious company trying to achieve this. Videos of their humanoid robots have been going viral for years now, and they are in fact quite impressive. And although their goal is not necessarily to make human-like robots that can be in our living room, it certainly shows how close we are to achieving this based on the hardware that they've been able to develop. Then you can look at the other big company making its way through headlines about robotics, Tesla. The tech company seems to have their sights set on a new frontier, humanoid robots. They claim that personal companion robots will be in incredibly high demand. I think uh, humanoid robots will be the biggest product ever. Uh, the demand will be insatiable. Which is all fine and well, but that brings me back to my original question. When are we going to stop seeing staged demos and actually see them in our homes? All right, I just wanted to stop here and mention that I know there are plenty of other companies besides Boston Dynamics and Tesla that are working on humanoid robots, but they're all pretty much in the same boat in terms of technology. So everything I'm about to mention applies to all of the ones that intend to put one of those humanoid robots in people's homes. Well, the answer is not very straightforward. But here are some of the factors that I see as potential hurdles to overcome before they can deliver on that promise. First, you have to consider power and energy consumption. You see, these humanoid robots aren't really what you call lightweight. And that means that they will need a lot of power in order to operate and do very basic tasks. And yes, battery tech has improved greatly over the past few years, but these robots are so heavy that they need to use massive batteries to gain eight hours of operation, which is right on the verge of what you consider okay if the goal is to have them be your daily companion. So this is definitely not something that they've solved yet, because it's not just as easy as fitting them with a new bigger battery. Bigger batteries need bigger power sources and longer charge times. So they do have to work with acceptable household limits if they intend this to be a household item. Now, the other problem is the dexterity and complexity of tasks that we can do. Although our daily task may sound like a lot less complicated than what these robots do in a factory, it's important to understand that the human body is an amazing machine. Your hand, for example, it's incredibly adaptive and can grab all sorts of different shaped objects without a problem. And trying to get a robot to reproduce the pressure sensitivity needed for our daily tasks is not necessarily easy. So these companies may claim that they were close to achieving these goals, but if you look at these videos closely, you can tell that there's still a big leap in refinement and fidelity that needs to take place before they can be trusted within people's homes completely unsupervised. Then, there's the cost. 
With estimates of $20,000 to $30,000 per unit, these humanoid robots will be far from cheap. And don't get me wrong, I understand how in a lot of ways this price is perfectly acceptable for the promise of what they could do for us. But it is important to make the distinction that it's not the same to expect people to pay $20,000 for a car that has been proven to work and improve people's lives versus expecting them to pay that amount for a product that has not really been proven yet. It's a lot more difficult to get a customer to commit to something like that, at least in the early stages. And then there's reliability and safety concerns. This is a big one for me. See, this robo vacuum here has been sitting collecting dust ever since there was a power outage in my house, and it caused it to be completely unusable and impossible to get it to respond again. And yes, I know. I could simply just call the manufacturer and ask for a refund. But the point is, these machines won't be perfect. They will have faults. They will have glitches. They will need reboots. But how will that look like? You're talking about robots with appendages that could grab items in your kitchen like knives and move about in your house. What happens when one of their sensors doesn't detect its surroundings correctly? Of course, this is just an example of the worst case scenario, but it is something to consider when we're talking about the hurdles that will need to be overcome in order to get this done. So when will we see them in our living rooms? It certainly seems like we're closer to this reality than ever before, but I'm not sure about their timeline. And I'm not an expert in this subject, but it does look like a lot of innovation needs to happen before we can actually see them in our homes. Thank you for watching another episode of The Thinking Path. See you next time.